Hi, everybody. Welcome to my very first video of this type. I hope I'll be able to do a lot of these. I hope you like them. They um, are going to be um, me evaluating in real time uh, a psychic reading. So we have oodles and gobs of readings that I have at my fingertips off the internet or people have sent me where I can analyze them <clears throat> in real time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video and I'm going to stop and pause and then comment as I go through. And it's your job, hopefully, to let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you found anything useful in it, and if I missed anything. So you can do that in the comments. So please do so. Um, I hear this all the time about People, people come to myself or Mark Edward and say, oh, well, there's no way the psychic could know that. Um, how did he appear so accurate if he's not real, um, uh, not really a medium? And there's a lot of different ways. And I think though that most of the time what happens is that the sitter is just not, um, they're not as skilled at looking at these, these uh, evaluating the their reading as, you would think that it, of course, you would know if it was, you know, uh, accurate or not. But there's a lot of reasons to go into it, including a lot of emotion. And this is happening very fast <clears throat> to the person who's being read. Um, what I'm going to show you is a three minute video. It's going to take me probably 10 minutes to get through it all because I'll be stopping and commenting as I go. So um, even a three minute reading has a lot of background thinking on it. But as you listen to it, Think about what it is that um, how the woman on the phone, it's a phone reading, is reacting. And keep in mind that it is coming to her very fast with a lot of emotion. She's being read by John Edward. And so that has a lot of prestige in it as well. Um, I am going to break it down. I'm going to try to be as accurate as I can, but, you know, let's see how, let's see how it goes. And if you like this, please let me know. And as I said, please let me know if you think I missed anything and let's get right to it. Okay. So what we're looking at right here is this is going to be a reading that is done over the phone. Um, it is for a uh, radio program. It's called the Kyle and Jackie O show. I don't know anything about them, but I, they probably are probably very prominent. Um, the sitter, and there's a whole bunch of sitters in the queue. I'm only going to talk about the first one because it just takes too long and, um, you know, to go through each one. So each, each segment would be a different video. Somebody brought this video to my attention. I don't normally spend much time on, on John Edward, but let's let's see what he's got. But what he, the person said that they're normally don't believe in psychics, but this this uh, recording that I'm going to show you, well, maybe not this specific reading, but somewhere on here, the person who brought it to my attention said, you know, I can't explain it. How could John Edward know all this information? This is just amazing. So. I don't know which which of the readings it is that this person found amazing, but let's see if we can figure it out. So I'm going to go through this. So keep in mind that the burden of proof is on the person making the extraordinary claim. So this is not the purview of the skeptical community to have to disprove everything all the time. I mean, because that's just silly because we can't constantly be disproving every little bit of information. The person who's making the claim is, you know, should be able to back it up. So let's put that out there right up front. We don't have to do this. Unless John Edward is going to come forward and say, I can communicate with the dead. Here, let's test it. And we test it. We can show that he really can communicate with the dead. We don't have to go any further. It, it would require an awful lot of proof, a lot more than just getting a reading with one person on the phone. Also, this they they make a big deal at the beginning for the sitter not to give any information to John Edward at all. The sitter is going to do that. You just can't help but do that. It's just human nature to give them information. Um, and we don't know if, let's just assume that he does not know who the caller is. I mean, we can't, we can't rule that out, right? And let's also assume that the, that the screener, the phone screener has not given any information to John Edward. Um, that also can't be ruled out, but we're just going to, for the moment, we're going to, we're going to assume that hasn't happened until we have proof that says otherwise. 
but I think from listening to this, this will be my third time listening to this, um, that there is no hot reading going on in here. In other words, uh, John Edward does not know who this person is ahead of a time. So let's get started. I'm going to pause it um, in several places to talk about what we're, we're hearing. So um, if you have to back up and forth a little bit yourself, um, go ahead and do that because I, I think that might be useful to listen to it more than once. I talk to you. I know you're going to try and cross over to who they're trying to connect to. Katrina, hi. Hello, Katrina. Hi, Hi, Carl. Hi, John. Hi. Hey, now don't tell John anything. Don't get <laughs> loading into rubbish yeah. about your whole life history because this is what his job is, is to see, see what he that. gets, to connect <laughs> with the other side, to open up the bloody, the devil's porthole or whatever it is that he's dealing with. I don't know what he, do, what he I don't know what it is. All right, I missed it. you, Kyle. I got it, Kyle. <laughs> um, Katrina, do you have a, a question? Is there something in air you want me to focus on or is there something specific you want to know? Yeah, John, um, I'd, I'd like to hear a message from my cousin. Okay. Okay, so let's start off here right away. John Edwards has very little to work with. This is an Australian uh, radio show. Um, I assume he's in Australia. And the the person on the end, her name is Katrina. Um, and it is, she sounds 40-ish, maybe. She's a female. She is Australian. At least that's from what I can tell of her accent. It seems Australian. That's easy to assume. So he can make certain certain assumptions about her female she does sound like she's australian she doesn't have an unusual name necessarily i mean you don't pick up a culture outside of just a normal white australian person from the name katrina and from her voice but you know you're always making these kinds of assumptions and that's helps steer where you're going to go with your with your reading so let's let's play on yeah well I, I might not be able to connect with your cousin but whatever it is that i see here and feel and i'm very conscious of the fact that we're on the radio um so yeah. i'm just gonna yeah. i'm just gonna say sometimes i see stuff that's kind of like private and really personal sometimes yeah. people make a decision that they um okay he's already starting by lowering the standards he's saying i might not be able to contact your cousin he asked her for something specific and if she had a topic or something she wanted to go to and he immediately discounts that and this is very important not only to set the, the bar low um, so that if he does get hits, then it seems even more extraordinary. But there's another reason why he's going to dissuade her right off the bat about the cousin. And I'll talk about that at the end. So now he's going to get into something here. He's going to in, in, insinuate that he has a lot of information he could tell her, but it's very private. and He doesn't want to do it on the radio. Well, in other words, I'm I'm not going to, you know, it's it's another way of saying I'm not going to give you a hit. Nobody knows who this woman is. She could have given a fake name for all we know. Why wouldn't he tell her something personal? It's not likely, it's not like people don't do that all the time on radios and stuff, especially in private, which is mostly private. They, d they don't want to extend their family um, yeah. and that they have to make a decision about whether or not they want to increase whether they're having another child or is that energy happening around you or did somebody around you not have a child? No. <laughs> okay. So I okay. So again, he knows this is a female. She may be of childbearing years. He started out with a very broad statement. I've never heard anybody use this, this specific uh, intro to a reading before of people um, and, and childbirth. I thought it was really odd because he starts out with, People make decisions about whether they should increase their family size or have children at all. Okay, what about it? And he says, some people make those decisions. Is that energy around you? I hate it when they use the word energy, using it incorrectly. But is that anywhere in you or do you know of somebody that's happened to? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many of us... I've had the conversation about having more children, not having children, our family members, uh, you know, I mean, we can't have children. It's just a very vague statement. Yeah. Now he says, do you know anybody that's happened to? And she says, yeah, me. Okay. Well, she might think of that as a hit. I think that's just the most vague statement you could throw out there. And, and she just happened to say, yeah, well, I haven't had children, but then again, if she had had children, it still would have hit because he said, do you know of anybody who's, she would interpret it. Let's say she has one child. 
Well, do you think she'd had a discussion with her partner about having a second child? Yes. Well, then it would fit. If she had three children do you, and, and he had said this statement, do you think she might have ever had a, a statement about having less children that maybe they should have stopped it too? Yes. So almost there's no way he 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 can get this answer wrong because it's so vague and it's especially to a woman it's already uh, somebody who's in childbearing years or past it you're already um i i just don't know how she would answer that incorrectly you understand so i mean even if we weren't talking about childbirth it could be adoption or you know yes we talked about having more children um i you know i can't have children so i'm gonna you're thinking about adopting or i mean i I could even see how a woman trying really hard to make this fit because this is what they want to do. Even talking about maybe adding another pet to the household or something like that. I mean, really, it, it's just that ambiguous. I feel like I need to bring that up. And is your maternal grandmother passed? Because I'm getting an, an energy of a grandmother that's passed. And it's an old, to me, it's a female figure that's above. So that to me is like mother, aunt, or grandmother. And she's the one that had the congestive heart failure. Okay. This is standard. We see this almost always with most readings. And they almost always go to an older person who's who's here, who's watching over you. And they kind of, if she had interrupted, the sitter had interrupted with, yes, my grandmother. Well, then he probably would have stopped there. But he he just, he flows really fast. He talks faster than I do. And you notice how he says, my it's it's a maternal grandmother. It's a older woman. It's a, a cousin, a sister, aunt, or whatever. I mean, he's got all these females that it could fit, and it could be great-grandmother. Now, keeping in mind that just from this woman's voice, I think she's probably in her 40s, um, just judging from her voice and the way she she speaks, you know, her elocution. And if she's 40, then her parents, just adjusting maybe a generation's 20 years, maybe 25 years in modern generations, Okay, so her her parents would be seven, 40, 50, 65. Her grandparents would be 85 or 90 at this point. So it's very likely that her grandparents would have, have died already. So that's a really good guess for him. Hitting the maternal thing kind of does make it sound a little more specific. But he went from grandmother, maternal grandmother, to just about any female that's older than you that has passed on. I mean, he boom, 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 boom. And then he hits because she died of congestive heart failure. And I want you to think about that. That's one of the leading causes of death for somebody who's who has made it into adulthood. Um, it's not like they slipped into the bathtub or or something like that, which actually is more common than you would think. But congestive heart failure, he didn't say she's the one who died um while skiing in an av avalanche or she's the one who um uh was beheaded by a helicopter when she got out i mean you know what i mean he, it's 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 the most generic pretty much thing he could say i mean other than like cancer heart defects uh, heart problems but once you get to a certain age a lot of people are you know, there's a certain level of things that you're going to probably be the most likely thing that's going to um, fill you, end your life. Uh, yes, I think one of my grandmas did have heart failure. Okay, and then they want to know if you're going to take care of what's... Okay, she admits it. She says, yes, I think one of my grandmothers had heart failure. Well, don't we all die of heart failure in the end? Okay, well, besides that, she says... Yes, she agrees to a grandmother, not his maternal grandmother, which which is what he said. And she says, I think. So she's really grasping. Okay, now I want to point this out. Most sitters, I mean, she believes she's probably stoked that she's getting read for free on a radio station, probably a popular radio station by this guy, John Edward, right? So sitters are trained to think that this connection in quotes that john edward has with the dead and departed her dearly departed is a tenuous thing that that it's not an exact science mediumship so sometimes 
they have to, the sitter has to be a little more generous with their, um, with agreeing to things because, you know, it's not an exact science. So they're, they may end up, you know, giving him a little slack, okay, and, and agreeing to it because they want the reading to continue. So if the sitter is saying, no, that's not right. No, I don't know what you're talking about. No, that's not right. If they do it a few times, well, then what John Edward is going to do is he's going to go, oh, I'm just not getting you today. Have a great day. Hang up and move to the next caller. That's what's going to happen. And the sitter does not want that to happen. She's probably been in the queue for, for a while. She's probably very excited about this. She probably thinks she just needs to kind of just help him out a little bit, give a little bit to it. But I'm not willing to be that charitable because I know darn well, he said, your maternal grandmother died of congestive heart failure. And she comes up with, she thinks maybe one of her grandmothers might have died of a heart attack, heart failure, not congestive heart failure, but it could have been a heart attack. It could have been anything. And she says she doesn't know. Now, this grandmother, supposedly who died of congestive heart failure, her maternal side, maybe, John Edward has a special message from this woman. Now, think about all the things that your grandmother, who's watching over you, apparently, this, this maternal grandmother, all the wisdom in the world that she could give you, all this amazing thing. She's finally able to contact you. You have finally got in on this radio show. You're finally talking to the famous John Edward, who's going to be able to give you all this amazing amount of wisdom. And your grandmother's like, yes, my granddaughter is here. I'm so excited to give her this piece of information. So let's hear what he tell what the grandmother wants to share with the granddaughter. It's happening with the your vehicle in the back part of the car. So I don't know if there's an issue with the back part of your car or vehicle, but they're making me feel like it's not up front. So it's not like mechanical up front. I would think maybe this is more either with a tire or some type of issue that's happening there. And then do you not know your dad? Okay. So this amount of wisdom, this amazing amount of wisdom that the grandmother wanted to share with her was her car, something with the car in the back? What, is she going to go run out from the phone now and go check her tire pressure? I mean, it's just so, it's just like he's just filling time, right? He doesn't even let her pause to have a reaction. He immediately goes from the from the back part of the car having some kind of, I mean, what does that mean? A rattling sound in the back of the car? Um, a tire has got a slow leak? Um what? And why would grandma be telling me that? I mean, I just, <sighs> and when you say these kinds of things to people who really believe, they say, Susan, come on. You know, my grandmother would tell me that kind of stuff all the time. And it just, it's just what's on grandma's mind. It's not that important to grandma. Okay. It's not that important to grandma. All right. So let's move on. So now he's made another statement. This is another statement of fact. You didn't know your father, did you? I do know my dad. So he doesn't know me at the moment. Okay, because they're telling me to use the reference of like not like the phrase for me, like not knowing dad. So you know of your dad, but there's a disconnect. Okay, he made a very specific, clear statement, and it was wrong, wrong, Mister Wrongy McWrong Face. He said you don't know of your don't know your dad, and she said yes, I know my dad. Okay. It should be a very simple statement. Wrong. And then she says, she says, I do know my dad, but he doesn't know me at the moment. Now, what does that mean to you? So if you're John Edwards sitting there and the other people, the other hosts in there, and you're thinking, okay, what does that mean? What comes to your mind? I think it means that she's adopted and that she has found her father on a genealogy page or on Facebook or someplace, social media, and she knows who he is now. Her mother just told her or whatever, but she's stalking him. So she knows something about him, but he doesn't know that she's looking for him. So her biological father is probably out there not realizing that she is stalking him right now and knows who he is. That's what I would think if I was one of those hosts. And that's what I would think if I was John Edward right now at this moment. So let's see what her answer is. Yeah, he's got dementia. Oh, oh gotcha. wow. Okay. So it's not okay. So 
that's another huge miss. I mean, miss of uh, like a massive proportions. Your hair would be blown back from your face with the amount of wind that that was coming by you as he missed it. Now you can see everybody's uh, response. Oh, 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 very emotional. These things are very emotional. Now, uh, John Edward has had some big misses. The woman doesn't seem to care. She probably thinks this is all going great. Let's look and see how he recovers from this miss. How I normally get that. Normally they show stuff to me differently. So here's what I'm seeing. I'm not getting the connection to your cousin, but what I feel like, and this might be important, and for everybody that's listening is if you have somebody who's dealing with Alzheimer's dementia or if they're like, let's say, in a medicinal coma because of their yeah. whatever the illness is, it is really, really important to talk to them like they can hear you. Think uh -huh. about it like a text, right? Like you're texting someone and they can't respond right away. One day yeah. when that person crosses, they're going to be able to like get service again and all those texts come on through and they're going to really? Yeah. And oh, I wow. Can't tell, so, I can't so tell how many, talking. How many people will come through from... Um, after like they've been you know had Alzheimer's for a few years and then they'll come through and they'll recount the conversations or things that did or did not happen Wow! Or how people Isn't that incredible didn't come see them or didn't talk to them or counted yeah. them out in a yeah. certain way okay so this is a load of BS a giant massive pile of dung and um, he's just making it up okay we know this so we don't we've never communi communicated with somebody from the dead so so he's saying that he communicates with the dead all the time and he's saying that he gets hits probably just as great as he did right now where the grandmother knows what's going on in the back half of your car that's a hit in his mind i guess even though she didn't validate it but <laughs> i people are always telling me well the medium gave me hope the medium made me feel better the medium was um you know, telling me that my dad really is there listening in. Okay, well, the opposite is true also. The medium, by telling you these things about you need to sit with them and communicate with your dad, even though he's in a coma or he's in a dementia situation or whatever, a lot of people cannot be there. They cannot be there, especially a lot of time near the end of the person's life and talking to them. It's it's a very difficult thing to be sitting there with somebody who does not recognize you anymore. It's painful. It's it's a horrible illness, right? So to to for somebody who just can't do it, either physically or because they just can't, do not have the emotional bandwidth to deal with this, if you do not sit with your father and talk to him about what's happening in the news or what's going on in your life or reading the newspaper to him, and somebody like Tom, John Edward has just made this statement after your family member has passed. Can you imagine the guilt that would that would be? You would have this immense amount of guilt, feeling like I didn't sit with my dad. I just assumed he was gone. I didn't make that flight out there to sit there and hold his hand and read the cartoons to him. I really badly messed up how horrible what a horrible human being i am so keep that in mind this is not always helpful which i don't think is lying to somebody is helpful at any time but not only that but it is extremely stressful um and emotional emotionally manipulative by john edwards to make these statements to make this specific person might feel good because her father's still alive but to, you know, a large swath of humankind who cannot be there at the end with their family members, this is really a gut wrencher, a punch to the gut. So, yeah. Does any of that make sense to you, Katrina, and and what John's saying there? Yeah, it does. Yeah, thanks, John. You're Thank very, you, very welcome. Katrina. We okay, so that's the end of that. That was three minutes and one second in. It does take a while to get through these. I apologize. The... um what i want you to know is that the sitter should never be blamed for these situations because remember the sitter already has bought into the fact that this um tv show radio show is endorsing him these are people she probably respects they think that they've done their research or whatever she's already probably been conditioned from from childhood that mediumship is real that people can communicate with the dead and she is talking to john edward who's one of the most famous um, living psychics out there right now. So this 
is not her fault that she believes it. Um, I would think that, uh, you know, my my personal opinion is that um, she's maybe just willfully ignorant to it. In other words, the information out there on mediumship is out there. She could find it if she wanted to find it, but uh, she's probably been conditioned not to. Um, it is, uh, most people do not record their readings. If they do, they might play it for one or two people, family members to listen to, but they don't usually sit and do the analysis like I am with you right now. They, um, they don't transcribe it either. And transcribing is the easiest way to see exactly what happened, to break it down, to really look at all the, the nuances of the words he uses. Uh, if you're, well, that is if you're transcribing it exactly, and you're looking at exactly how he said what he said, and um, the words he used, not just grandmother, but he said maternal grandmother. And then he said, aunt and blah, 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 you know, an older, older person who's female around you and, you know, these kinds of things. So it's coming at this woman fast and furious. That was three minutes. So that was fast. It's a very emotional time. She's on the radio. She's stressed. She doesn't know what's going to come at her. So um, it's not her fault. John Edward has done hundreds of thousands, probably, of these kinds of readings. So to him, it's just rolls off the tongue. It's a lot of wordplay, fast speaking. And she's trying to react to it in real time and think, wait, which grandma, did my grandmother, wait, wait the, what, the car, but no, no, dementia, you know, she's in a stressful situation with her father already having dementia. So um, also keep in mind that these people are very motivated to get this reading. Not only do they need it to be real, if, you know, want it to be a real reading that they're connecting with the dead, but they, a lot of cases, they need it to be real. She needs to know that when her dad dies, she's going to be able to go back and uh, connect with him and, and, and he'll be dad again. He'll be able to tell her, you know, how much he loves her and, and he thanks her for sitting by his bed and um, talking to him about politics and what's on the cartoons and, and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, I want to go back to one more thing that I said at the beginning that I was going to touch on, and that was the cousin. So I want you to think about that a minute. That is the thing she wanted to be in touch with is her cousin. Now we assume that cousin would be dead, right? So there's no way in this world that John Edward is going to get touch that with a 50 foot pole. Whenever he's got a three minute reading and somebody says, I want to be in touch with my cousin. He's not going to be in touch with their cousin. I'm sorry about that. And there's reasons behind that. And the reasons are that he knows nothing. This is not a hot reading. It is a cold reading. So what would he say? If he really could communicate with the dead, you would think he'd be in touch with the ground, with the cousin. I mean, he's in touch with the, you know, all these other things. <laughs> why He knows about the car. <laughs> I don't know about the car, but why can't he be in touch with the cousin? You would think that'd be obvious, especially since that's the reason she came on the call. That's her whole emotion wants to be in touch with that cousin. That is really what her heart's desire is to be in touch with that cousin she's willing, willing to spend her three minutes not on a grandmother not on somebody else not on a friend she went to high school with but the cousin why can't he get the cousin what would he say he doesn't even know if it's a male or female he doesn't know how long they passed he doesn't know what they passed of he doesn't know what their true relationship was it could have been a slip in the bathtub it could have been a uh, it could have been a fall off a, a mountain somewhere. It could have been, um, um, you know, an illness like cancer or COVID or something like that. It could have been um, in her childhood and she didn't know her cousin well. It could have happened last week. It could have been a car accident, a motorcycle accident, a murder, a suicide. It could have been a drug overdose. It could have been thousands of things. But he doesn't know even a slight hint of what it is. So there's nothing he's going to be able to guess in this limited amount of time that would not make it obvious that he is not in contact with her cousin. So there's no way he was going to touch that. And that I think is one of the takeaways that I want to make sure everybody knows is that it's not always what they get. It's what's missing. And you think about that. He, he had no names. 
no grandmothers. Why do you just say your great grandma Alice? This is your mom's, your mom Elizabeth's mother Alice, and uh, her parents were Fred and George um, and Georgina, and uh, they lived in, um, uh, you know, in Sydney, Australia. And no, he knows none of that. He can't. He can't know any of that. It is not, and it's not because this is an exact science. It's because this is BS, right? But you, so think about not only what they get and what they miss, but what is missing completely from the whole the whole reading. And I think that um, if you think of it that way, maybe you'll start to see why it feels like these people are right. She said she got something out of it. They asked her, did he hit on stuff? Does he write? And she's like, yeah, no, there was nothing. There was zero zip. If we had to score this, there would be zero. In fact, I'd give it bigger than zero, negative numbers, because he missed completely bold statements he made. He missed, missed them in massive ways. So if you found this recording interesting, I'm sorry I talk a little fast. It takes me a while to get through these uh, uh, recordings. There's always a lot to say. Um, and each time you hear something like this, you pick up on something else each time. But I'm sure I'm probably missing something. Please, in the in the uh, comments, could you please uh, leave me some feedback if you like this idea of doing, if I should do more of these kind of recordings, and if I miss something or your other thoughts on it, I would appreciate it. So you guys have a great day. Thank you so much.